very much, George. And then we'll continue um, with the next uh, uh, speaker, who is uh, Ioannis uh, Skondrianos, who is an electrical engineer from Greece. He actually has been spending some time here in Denmark and also at uh, the Nordic Polka Center. He will talk about uh, design, fabrication, and control of a PMSG as a part of a small HAWT. Please go on, uh, Johannes. Hello, everybody. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, my name is Johannes Kondrianos. I come from Greece. I was a trainee at Focus Center almost five years ago. Uh, right now, I will talk as a DDU graduate, and this is a topic of my thesis that was um, uh, that took place at DDU two semesters ago. It is about the design, the fabrication, and the control of a permanent magnet synchronous generator as a part of a small horizontal axis wind turbine. So let's take uh, the things from the start. Every year um, in the Netherlands, there is a competition that takes place. It's called the International Small Wind, Small Wind Turbine Contest, which is organized by the Hans University of Applied Sciences, and it is hosted in the wind tunnel of TU Delft. The DU participates every year. We form a team and, uh, by students, and uh, we create wind turbines designed and produced 100% by students. Last year, we went with two wind turbines, one horizontal axis and one vertical axis wind turbine. This is about the horizontal axis one. It is about a, dry, a direct drive system with a blade length of 0 0.5, 0 0.75 meters. This was a requirement from the competition. That means that the swept area was more or less uh, two square meters. The tip speed ratio, as it was calculated by the last simulation, was equal to five. And uh, the blade CP value, 0 0.46. All these uh, last simulations performed in um, a software that was created by DTU. It's called Hawk2, and it is available available for DTU students to perform this kind of uh, simulations. Excuse me. Okay. As far from me, the input that I was given by the rest of the team uh, was that they wanted a system that could produce 700 watts at uh, 600 RPMs. Of course. I had to oversize a little bit the system because I was working on two 2D models. So I had to have a little margin. I wanted to produce more. The nominal voltage was 60 volts and the diameter of the machine was 20 centimeters. Let's see a little bit about um, the classification of this kind of machines. We're talking, uh, depending on the flux direction, we have two types of. Uh, permanent magnet synchronous generators. We have the radial flux machine, which uh, is characterized by its simple structure and uh, the easing fabrication. On the other hand, we have uh, the axial flux machine, which has short action length and a great flux leakage, and it is much more difficult to fabricate than the previous one. Depending on the rotor and stator positions, we have uh, the internal rotor con configuration. That means that the magnets, the stator is in the, the rotor of the machine is in the stator. The windings in that uh, type of configuration are closer to the outer casing. That means that it is much more easy to cool it down because most of the heat in this kind of machines is on the um, windings of the machine because of the current passing through the copper wires. On the other hand, we have the external rotor configuration. Here we have the stator inside of the, um, of the rotor. The magnets in that uh, type of uh, machine are mounted in the inner part of the rotor. And uh, more or less, they are used in uh, propellers of remote control model airplanes and drones and this kind of stuff. Depending on the magnet position now, the magnets which are located on the rotor of the machine. We have three different um, configurations. We have the surface mounted magnets, which uh, you can see at the, the image on the screen. It's characterized by its simple structure and varies in fabrication. However, they have low structural, low structural integrity, especially in very high um, uh, rotational speeds. 
and they are affected a little bit by the magneto magnetomotive harmonics. The second is the surfacings and the MSGs. You can see that they are in the rotor, they have better mechanical protection, and when we're talking about mechanical protection, the best mechanical protection is uh, given by the interior EMSGs, which are more efficient in terms of uh, structural integrity, but the flux in the air cap, the flux that they produce in the air cap is much lesser. After taking uh, these parameters and some more in consideration, we decided to go with a radial flux machine, an interior rotor design, surface mounted, uh, magnets and a single, la single layer and fractional slot considerated windings, which uh, I can um, explain what they are later. I don't have too much time right now. You can ask me about that. The evaluation criteria be between the different slot pull combinations are the average torque of the machine. Of course, the higher is the better. The winding factor, which depicts the amount of uh, flux that travels from the stator, uh, from the rotor to the stator, the torque ripple and the cogging torque, and cogging torque is, was something really important for us. Uh, cogging torque is um, the torque that is created be because of the interaction of the magnets of the machine and the slots of the stator, and uh, it uh, makes it very difficult to move the machine, especially at low wind speeds. So the, the less the cogging torque, the less the um, cutting wind speed that we can achieve. We have also to evaluate the machines uh, in terms of efficiency and of course in practical decisions concerning the easy ways to manufacture the machine because the machine was all of it 100% handmade. These were the configurations that were about to be compared. We start with a combination of 36 36 slots and 32 poles, and we finish up with a combination of 48 slots and 46 poles. In terms of uh, total torque, we can see that um, they're more or less, they give the same uh, results. However, we can see that at the, top, uh, at the top right of the picture that the cooking torque is much better, much lesser in the um, combinations of 42 slots and 38 poles and 42 slots and 40 poles. And at the bottom left of the picture, we can see that the combination with 42 slots and 40 poles gives the less torque ripple. The less torque ripple means less noise while the machine operating and uh, better curves in terms of back EMF. In terms of efficiency, and uh, in that case, we had to calculate the three different kinds of losses in the machine, which are the copper losses in the copper wires, the iron losses in the laminations of the stator, and the magnet losses, which are some eddy currents, which in that case were really slow. And uh, in terms of efficiency, we can see that all of the machines are high in efficiency, 33%, uh, most of them. Um, the losses, however, if we exclude the um, 33, 36 slot and 32 pole combination are increasing as the number of the poles of the machine is increasing. And this is because as the number of poles means, meaning the number of magnets are increasing, higher frequencies uh, are introduced to the state of the machine and that leads to more iron losses. This can be depicted in uh, this slide too, uh, the blue uh, part of the pie is the iron losses. Um, we can see again, as the number of the poles of the machine increase, the losses do so. And also we can see that the permanent magnet losses, the losses because of the eddy currents on the magnet are 1% or less uh, out of the whole amount of the losses. Uh, taking all of this in consideration, we decided to go with a 40 slot and 40, to, uh, 40 pole model. How, however, the research, the research doesn't stop there. Uh, we had to check some other uh, details of the machine, and one of these was the air gap length of the machine, which is the space between the stator and the rotor of the machine, uh, as you can see in the top left picture. 
here we tested three different um, lengths, one millimeter, 1.5 and two millimeters. We can see as that as the length increases, the output torque gets less, which is not good, but we can see also that as it increases, the noise on the output curve is becoming less. At uh, the top right uh, picture, we can see again that as the um, air gap length increases, we have reduced iron losses, which means that less flux travels from the rotor to the stator. In terms of efficiency, all of the three different lengths are doing quite good, more than 33%. One more thing that uh, was tested was the variation in the slope opening width. We, while talking, we have always to keep in mind that the machine was handmade. I will be saying that many times. And uh, one of the criteria was the ease in fabrication. So the more the slot opening width, the easier to insert by hand the, um, uh, the windings into each slot. But the more the slot opening width, uh, the less the torque that we get. And so we have to do a little trade off here in order to find the best solution. Last thing in terms of uh, this model is the coating tor torque reduction. I, I already told you how, impor how important it was for us. And in order to fight that, we decided to test different screen angles. You can see that uh, the rotor consists of three rows of 18 millimeter long magnets, which match, which match the total length of the stator and the rotor uh, of 44 millimeters. We decided to do a three-step skew of uh, these poles. We started with zero angle, we reached up to three degrees, three mechanical degrees angle. As the angle of the screen was increasing, we could see that the torque was dropping. However, uh, the best results for us were given by a skew angle of 0 0.37, uh, 0 0.375 mechanical degrees. It reduced the talking, the talking torque from 0.91% to 0.37%, which was a huge improvement for us. This is a small overview of uh, the losses of the machine, and it was something that we was totally we were totally expecting. We can see that the rotational as the rotational speed increases, the iron loss increases at the top uh, left picture of the slide. We can see again that uh, as the current density increases, the current density uh, is equal to depict, depicts the load of the machine. So as the load increases, the copper loss increases because the current increases. And at the bottom right picture of uh, the slide, we can see the efficiency map of uh, the generator, which was really good uh, according to our supervisors. In this slide, we have a small overview of uh, the characteristics of the machine. Uh, we can see that the nominal load, the nominal torque was at 12.884 Newton meters, and the back AMF was 55.5 volts, which was less than the 60 volts uh, that was requested by the competition. The efficiency at rated values was 93.5%. Let's go now to the fun part, the construction. This is, uh, the left picture depicts the um, stator laminations and the right picture depicts the rotor. The, these uh, were not made at EDU, this was, these were ordered. Um, you can see that the rotor comes in three different pieces because of the string process that we discussed before. Here is the first steps of winding the stator. You can see that in each slot there are two types of insulations, insulation introduced. Uh, excuse me. I have five minutes left, okay. There are two types of um, the insulation introduced, the white one is, um, uh, the, the, the yellow one is cut on tape, and the white one is a Nomex paper. That was very important for us in order to make the copper wires do not, not to touch the housing of the machine. Here we have the, the stator of the machine with all the windings. Here we have the winding pattern and a really bad soldering at the phase B. It was it was changed afterwards. And uh, this was the stator, how the stator looked like after everything was finished. 
I don't have picture of the rotor here, but I have the rotor in the stator. This is the machine more or less ready. This is the machine on the tower of uh, the wind turbine. And in its case, because there was a case constructed for it. And this was the wind turbine outside the outside of the wind tunnel of uh, TU Delft. It was minutes before it went to compete. Uh, the blades are carbon fiber. They were constructed at DTU and created by DTU students. And uh, let's finish with some uh, a little discussion of the control of the machine. Uh, what uh, I tried to do was I tried to implement uh, a type of control called optimal torque control. Um, more or less, I, what I was trying to do is to follow the dots at this maximum power point uh, curve of the, um, of the generator. The algorithm consists, consists more, or, more or less of four different steps. First of all, measure the generator speed. This needs an encoder. Second step is to calculate the reference torque in order to see what the torque should be for each different wind speed. After we have that, we set the reference to axis current. Uh, some mathematical formulas help us to do that. And after we have the Q axis current, we compare it to the actual current. It's, it is the, the actual current that comes from the machine. And this is fed to a PI controller in order to uh, have to have some um, voltage uh, signs in order to feed our uh, converters. This is a block diagram of more or less of what's happening. We have, uh, you can see where my cursor is right now, the MPPT control. And uh, this is actually, this uh, the, the um, picture that you can see here. All of this was implemented in the in the Texas Instruments Development Board. Uh, I can I don't have too much time to elaborate on that right now, but we could see that by changing the rotational speed, we could change we, we, we could change the IQ current, and it was something that was working really good for us. The wind turbine won the competition. We managed to produce a little more than one kilowatt at 13 meters per second. This was uh, at a CP total of this. This is combined the blade and their motor efficiency, 39.6%. This was a team that traveled to the Netherlands. The team consisted of 11 students. This is a team that made it to the Netherlands. And uh, thank you very much for your um, attention. And I cannot hear uh, Morten. I think more, more, more than nothing is muted. Yes, I'm on now. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Ioannis. It was really interesting, the research you have been doing, and uh, also that the manufacturers in the future, they can see there is um, a research going on, and uh, that's very positive. And uh, congratulations with your um, good results. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions right now for uh, Johannes? Then please raise them. Otherwise, we'll go to the next item.